We're doing this again? Really? Monday, backed by President Biden, California Senator Dianne Feinstein reintroduced a bill banning assault weapons and high-capacity magazines, saying in a statement, it's time we stand up to the gun lobby and remove these weapons of war from our streets. And yesterday, uh, uh, my buddy Dianne Feinstein reintroduced her Senate uh, weapon, assault weapons ban. I am asking you all to send that to my desk as quickly as you can. What they can to pass an assault weapons ban, recently reintroduced by Senator Dianne Feinstein so he can sign it into law. Here's that statement from Feinstein that released this statement saying, quote, I refuse to let this become the new normal from universal background checks to banning dangerous assault weapons and high capacity magazines. Democrats have put forward reasonable common sense proposal that Americans broadly support and would save lives if Congress could only find the will to stand up to the gun lobby. For those of you who don't know who Dianne Feinstein is, Dianne Feinstein is to the Second Amendment what the Wicked Witch of the West was to the Wizard of Oz. This is the Wicked Witch of the West. She's worse than the other one. I'll get you, my pretty. She is obsessed with destroying the Second Amendment, and she doesn't even hide it. California Senator Dianne Feinstein worked for more than a year to get the assault weapons bill passed in the face of ferocious opposition from the National Rifle Association. She says she got the best she could. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in. I would have done it. Dianne Feinstein has been trying to pass an assault weapon ban since 1995. She's relentless with it. She literally tries to pass an assault weapon ban every single year. For crying out loud, she's 89 years old. She needs to be at home watching reruns of the Golden Girls and eating Jello, not trying to make it harder for good people to protect themselves from the criminals that her political policies have emboldened. Instead, she'll wait until there's a tragedy, and if an AR-15 or any other semi-automatic rifle was used in any capacity, they roll her out of the closet waving an updated version of the assault weapon ban bill that includes even more guns than it did the last time. That's why I say the word assault weapon, assault style weapon, or assault cisgender weapon, they're all made up terms. They don't have a real definition because if they did, she wouldn't have to keep updating the assault weapon ban bill with new guns and naming them specifically. But now, they've gotten so desperate, they don't even care what gun was used. They'll just throw the word assault in front of it, and bam, to them it is now an assault weapon. They're literally calling the pistol used in this mass shooting an assault pistol. What's crazy is that the assault weapon ban bill wouldn't even have stopped this shooting from happening. The gun used was already illegal in California. And let's not forget, all of these recent mass shootings that they're using to push this AR-15 ban happened in California, a state that already has an assault weapon ban. That's like your neighbor coming to you and telling you that, yo, you need to try this new weed killer I've been using. It's freaking awesome. And then you look over at your neighbor's lawn and it's filled with weeds. That's not a shining endorsement of how the product works any more than the crime going on in California is not a shining endorsement of how an assault weapon ban would work on a federal level. We don't want your funky assault weapon ban. From 1982 to 2023, California has had the highest number of mass shootings in the United States, while also being ranked number one for having the strictest gun laws in the United States. Someone please make this make sense to me. Second only to shotguns, rifles are the least used type of guns in shootings. Even if you narrow it to just guns used in mass shootings, rifles still aren't the most used type of gun in those types of shootings. It's not even close. So someone explain to me, why are we still talking about passing an assault weapon ban? This is stupid. The Columbine massacre happened when we had an assault weapon ban. When the ban expired, they didn't bother to renew it because the data showed it didn't do anything. This is stupid. They know the assault weapon ban won't do anything to save lives. They're not trying to pass it to save lives. They're trying to pass it because it's the easiest next step in their desire to ban guns. I've spelled this out numerous times. Assault weapon ban is easier than handgun ban or all gun ban. They pass an assault weapon ban and then nothing changes because those type of guns aren't really used. And then they can then turn around and set their sights on the next type of gun, i.e. handguns. They know the vast majority of gun violence is committed with handguns. 
So they'll start talking about how so many people were dying because of handguns and the assault weapon and the assault weapon ban didn't work. So now we have to go to the next thing and now we have to ban handguns. And then after that, they'll move on to the next thing. And they'll start talking about, oh, we banned the handguns, but oh my God, this person came and committed this act of terror with a shotgun. We need to ban the shotguns. And then so on and so on and so on. You can't tell me I'm just making it up because it's exactly what they did in Canada. Go look at Canada. Same progression. First, they started with the so-called assault rifles or the assault weapons or whatever name they come up with in Canada. Then it moved on to the handguns. Now you can't even get handguns in Canada. I don't care if they call it an assault weapon ban, an assault pistol ban, an assault shotgun ban. It's all garbage designed to make you beholden to the government and the criminals who don't obey laws in the first place and who won't give up their guns. In every society, there's a group of people who need to be controlled and victimized by the people in power. I'll get you, my pretty. So they tell you to give up your guns because there are some people out there who will try to use them against you. What they don't tell you is that you might need them to protect yourself against them too. Because the Second Amendment was written to tell the government to leave the people's guns alone because those people might need those guns to protect themselves from those types of people and the government. And yes, AR-15s are protected by the Second Amendment. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It didn't say only handguns, it said arms. You know, we talk a lot about empowerment in this country, except for when it comes to the Second Amendment. However, I can't think of anything more empowering than having the most effective tool to protect you and your family. So help me spread this message by liking and sharing this video with everyone you know. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment because the Second Amendment, when it said militia, it wasn't talking about the government. It was talking about you. Also, if you want to know where to find the I'm the Militia shirt and merchandise, click the I'm the Militia link in the description section of this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, make sure you hit that bell symbol.